Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. I have a very, very interesting guest today, Chung Lam, who is the CFO of Latour Bakehouse. Now, what is an energy show doing featuring a bakehouse? Well, talk about energy efficiency. But before we get into the program, uh, Trung is a very, very interesting fellow because he's second generation and he, both of his parents were uh, boat people who had to escape from Vietnam. That's correct. Yes, yep. And had a hard time of it and they're in America and this is a success story, a success story. It's been my observation that most of the time immigrants just are go above us head and shoulders, us uh, native born, because we take America for granted. Immigrants know the alternative to America and they really appreciate it and they work like heck and they make us all look good. So welcome to the program, Trung. Thanks oh. for uh, com coming on board here. Thank you, Howard, for having me. So tell us, uh, I'm, I'm always interested in immigrant stories, so tell us, uh, a bit about your mom and dad and how the, the bakehouse uh, got started initially. Sure thing. Uh, so I just want to make one point. You mentioned mm -hmm. how you notice a lot of immigrants tend to work harder than a lot of mm -hmm. native-borns. And I, I'm native-born. I'm second generation, and, mm -hmm. I, and I see it all the time. <laughs> and I talk to my dad, because at work, we'll have our, our corporate meetings, and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll try to make group decisions together. And he tends to be more on the risk-taking side, as more to risk-averse mm -hmm. like me. And I ask him, Dad, mm -hmm. why are you willing to take these risks? And he always says, you know, when I was in Vietnam, so not only is my father in Vietnam, but he was actually homeless for a period of time when he was in Vietnam as a child. He was kicked out and he was on the streets. So he tells me, like, no matter how much I lose in mm -hmm. America, it still will never be as bad as I had it in Vietnam. Yeah. So definitely they had a really hard, difficult life in Vietnam. Yeah, I, I was in uh, Saigon many, many, many years ago, and I would see these street kids Mm -hmm. uh, begging or trying to shine shoes or something like that. That would be like my dad, yeah. He was selling lottery tickets. That was his, that was his spiel. Uh, yeah. Wow. So, uh, mm. yeah, my parents both came to Vietnam. Uh, mm -hmm. They came in the late 70s. Uh, actually immigrated to California mm -hmm. before they came to Hawaii. And my father, um, you know, he, he runs a bakery now, but he didn't start that way. When he came to the U.S., he picked up uh, different jobs here and there. He actually worked for Intel for a period of time. Hmm. Not as an engineer, just on the plant floor, mm -hmm. uh, helping with whatever odds and ends they needed. But he always wanted to have his own business, so he left that. And he actually started a, uh, a tour bus business that drove uh, people from San Jose, which is where they live, mm -hmm. to Reno. And that hmm. was his, his own business. He bought a, he bought a shuttle, uh, shuttle bus wow. and did that for a while. And during that time of his life, he met someone who owned a sandwich shop. And they became good friends. And my father started offering sandwiches on his shuttle bus <laughs> because there was more competition. So he said, how do I differentiate my business than mm -hmm. someone else? So I'm going to mm -hmm. offer free sandwiches to all my writers. So he started doing that. And after a while, I mean, it was, it was pretty good money. Like, we managed to survive. Mm -hmm. So my, my father, my mother, and he has two children. Two children. I have a younger brother. So he, we got by. But after a while, it became difficult to, to make a profit. So, mm -hmm. you know, his friend told him, you know what? His name is Tan, Tan Lam. So he told him, Tan, I have the sandwich shop. It's doing pretty well in California. I hear there's a lot of Vietnamese in Hawaii. So why don't you partner with me and we'll go to Hawaii and open a shop? Talk about taking a risk. He didn't know Hawaii from Shmai. No, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, I mm. believe I'm, he's going he's gonna to mm. kill me if I get this wrong. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he flew over in October of 1984 mm -hmm. and, uh, just to check out Hawaii. And by December of 1984, he already had a shop open. High cost of doing business and all the regulations that we have and everything. Yeah, yeah, he just took it. Uh, he was lucky, he found a good landlord. He found good uh, employees really quickly. Mm -hmm. And he was able to open in that 30, 34 years now. Wow. So he had to develop management skills on the fly then. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. And yeah. some would say he still is developing management <laughs> skills. We all are. We, we all are. But yep. Uh, he was working 18 hour days, seven days mm -hmm. a week. He, he would be there. He would sleep there. He would do it from baking the bread to cleaning up the shop at the end of the day. That is not uncommon for immigrants. 
No, no. Yeah, 18 hour days, yeah. So you didn't really know him all that well for a period then, because uh, he, yeah, he so just comes staggering in after a while. I was a, I was a toddler around the time they opened, so I was mm -hmm. a little more than two years old when we moved here. Uh, mm -hmm. I was born in California. Um, so they didn't have daycare, so they couldn't mm -hmm. afford daycare. Mm -hmm. So I was at the shop. So even though he was working a lot, I was there pretty much mm -hmm. every day with him and my mom. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so well, let, let's pu pull up the first uh, slide here. Yeah, sure. just give you an introducing energy right. efficiency in food manufacturing, and we'll, we'll definitely get into the details. Yeah, what motivated or what got you interested in energy efficiency? Well, a little bit of backstory. So we started in '84 with a sandwich shop, and that was mm -hmm. actually called Bale Sandwiches. Oh, sure. And that yeah. grew from one sandwich shop in Chinatown to, at its peak, more than 22 locations statewide. Good lord, this is just you or your dad and mom and uh you know so we we, we had a lot of employees my father mm -hmm. also has six brothers Ooh. Uh, and my mom has some siblings as well so a lot of them came to hawaii to live and they wanted something to do mm -hmm. so my father's like why don't you open <laughs> bali sandwich shops so you know like the uh the bali at ward is family mm -hmm. and a lot of them maybe not now are family but at some point they were family owned uh, previously, hmm. and, uh, and as we were growing, we realized, you know, we can't really make enough bread in our small shop uh, in Chinatown, mm -hmm. and we needed a, a new facility. So in the early 90s, we, uh, 94, my father moved our baking facility to uh, Kalihi mm -hmm. on Dillingham. It was an old tire factory, oh, and goodness, he, he yeah. built his first bakery there, which was about 5,000 square feet. And, uh, you know, we found a great home there. We expanded beyond just our Vietnamese sandwiches. We started servicing hotels, restaurants, airlines. And uh, while we were there, we also picked up uh, dough production for Papa John's Hawaii, which is really funny because I always tell people, like, you may not have heard of us, mm -hmm. but I almost guarantee you you've had some of our products <laughs> yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Hmm. And then we grew. We, we kept growing until we burst at the seams at that location. And we went from 5,000 square feet there, and we rented another facility, got up to almost 20,000 square feet total space, mm -hmm. but we filled that. And in 2000... That's, that's half an acre, 20,000 yeah, square feet. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, you know, bread takes up a lot of space. You have a lot of equipment to make mm -hmm. it, and a lot, of, mm -hmm. a lot of employees as well. Uh, but in 2010, we moved to our current home, which is uh, on Nimitz Highway, still pretty close by in Ivole, where we have 80,000 square feet dedicated to Two acres. food production. Yeah. Wow. Let's, let's do the, the next slide here. Sure. So who were these people? Uh, so that's my, you can't tell because we all look the same age, but the one in the <laughs> middle and the one holding the sandwiches in the hat, that's my father. Uh, you know, he had me when he was pretty young, so his early 20s. So he's mm -hmm. not, we keep trying to ask him to retire, mm -hmm. but he's, no, he, he, no, just, no. he just turned 60. He's right around 60 uh, right now, so he's not quite ready yet. Spring, spring yeah. chicken. And, yeah. um, on the other side of him, so I'm on his right, and on the other side is my younger brother, Brandon, who mm -hmm. is the current president of the company. Mm -hmm. So family business, that's a picture taken in our current location with our Furukake Pus, which is something we sell at Costco, Furukake. and we're hoping to get uh, nationwide as well. Huh. Vietnamese family manufacturing Furukake. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's Hawaii, right? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, everything's yeah, a melting yeah, pot. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, we're a Vietnamese family, mm -hmm. a lot of French, European-inspired bread. Mm -hmm. but we also do, like, Asian, Japanese products. We do uh, tower rolls, sweet rolls, really? pretty much A to Z. At, at one point, I always joke about this because we're trying to change this. We, we produce over 700 different items. Too much. Food <laughs> items? <laughs> Food items, ranging from dinner rolls down to uh, salads, to sandwiches, to tapioca. Spring rolls. Uh, we we are, I, I would say, a, a pretty decently sized food manufacturer here in Hawaii. I would, and all this is in eighty thousand square feet. Eighty thousand square feet, exactly. So you can see why twenty thousand might not have been enough for yeah. what we were doing. That's mind boggling. Yeah. Hmm. Well, let's go to the next slide. Sure. I, yeah, we're we're doing the family story here. Okay, right. now. So, so this gives you a story of mm -hmm. how our utility usage was back in 84 when we started with the sandwich shop. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can't really compare a sandwich shop to a food manufacturing facility, yes. but it gave you kind of like our, our growth uh, over the years. Mm -hmm. 96 is when we actually moved into that uh, facility on Dillingham, the first facility, and we saw a modest increase in utilities. Uh, by the time we were looking at moving in 2004, we were getting about 13,000 square feet. Uh, $13,000 a month in utilities. Mm -hmm. That's just for uh, electric electrical, by the way. Oh, oh, that doesn't include the gas. No, nope, that is just uh, electrical. Yeah. 
Mm. And in 2010, when we moved to the new facility, it skyrocketed to $28,000. Uh, $28, mm -hmm. And uh, my background is actually in engineering. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when it comes to logistics, I do have a master's in business as well. So finance and engineering mm -hmm. kind of background combined. I'm sure. looking at these costs. I'm like, we have to do something about mm -hmm. these utility costs. So uh, we approached a few different vendors and we looked at different ways to try and save energy. Mm -hmm. Saving energy is good for the environment, but it's great because it saves us money as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, uh, the biggest uh, project we did was a PV system, mm. and that was about 300 uh, kilowatt hour system. Pretty sizable system. That's a good size, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and this and you, is back You've got in, plenty of roof space, that, that's for sure. Right, yeah, right, so yeah, we yeah. were in the, on Nimitz Highway, there's the mm -hmm. Dole boxing facility back in the day, so mm -hmm. it's a big square box, and we had about half the roof to fill with PV, mm. and uh, we did. And we were actually one of the first people to do what's called the uh, the FIT system, the feed-in tariff system. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right now, it's gone, mm -hmm. uh, and replaced by the NEM system, which we also had. Uh, but we were one of the first to do it, so we actually had to do an interconnect study, which HECO required, mm -hmm. just to make sure the grid could handle the size of the system we were putting And, and your engineering background? Oh, I didn't do it, but oh. we, we outsourced that, but mm -hmm. I, was, I was in charge of the project. So it helped mm -hmm. that I had an engineering background yeah. to see, you know, what are they requiring, why are they requiring, because it costs a significant amount of money to do the study, almost mm -hmm. $30,000 just for the study. My goodness. Um, but at this time, there was some really incredible tax incentives. Yeah. Uh, with the, it wasn't even just a tax credit, you could get a cash back option, mm -hmm. and it took mm -hmm. the, uh, Maybe the next, I think the next slide uh, shows it yeah, as well. Yeah, let's, the, the let's do the... There you go. Yeah. Uh, ended up saving 50% uh, cash with federal and state incentives combined. Mm -hmm. So taking something that would have been, you know, almost a 10-year payback to about five mm -hmm. years. And, you know, for our size, it was about a $2 million savings over the lifetime of the system. And you're estimating the lifetime would be 20 years, 25 years, or...? Uh, I think it was, uh, this was a while ago, but uh, I would say between 10 and 15 years, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Now, actually, if you maintain the system well, mm -hmm. uh, it could be easily be 20 years. Yeah. That's what we're hoping. I mean, mm -hmm. we've paid a lot, so uh, mm -hmm. we do quarterly uh, maintenance on the system, and it's been performing oh, very good, well. Oh, good, 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 yeah. yeah. And the 50%, uh, last time I looked, the state offered 35%, feds offered 30%, right. 30 plus 35, 65. I, it was 35 for the state if it was a tax credit. Oh, oh, credit, 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 yeah. sure, And sure, I believe sure, when sure, it was sure, cash, sure. it was a little bit less. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, at that time, we were not generating enough profit to realize that tax credit in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. So we chose instead of the uh, tax credit, or the, ta okay. the cash back. Okay. We were also building a new facility and trying to grow that. So we, need, yeah. we needed the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Hmm. Well, let's take a look at the, the next slide here. So, yeah, you started off with your PV system. Right. And incidentally, a little side uh, benefit is your shading. The PV systems are set off the roof surface, so you have that shaded area. That shaded area is having zero heat gain. Which is great. I mean, yeah, we, we yeah, did yeah. put a cool roof technology <laughs> mm -hmm. on the roof just to reduce the amount of energy sure, used yeah. for cooling. Mm -hmm. uh, but that system, which would have cost us about $2 million, ended up costing us about $1 million to install. And after a while, it was, it was great savings, but we were looking, okay, we, we had our taste of energy savings. Mm -hmm. Like, what else can we do? Mm -hmm. So we looked at other different technologies yeah. to help us. So we had uh, replacing all our lights with LEDs. When you're trying to light 80,000 square feet for production level lighting, yeah, it needs to be pretty yeah, bright. You have areas that are going to need a significant amount of light, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the uh, obviously not everyone's been to the facility, but mm -hmm. the it's pretty high ceilings. It's about 20,000. Uh, not 20, 20 feet high. 20 feet, yeah. Inside as well. So to get enough that, that's uh, light. That's a lot of foot candles yep. to get that down. And your the surface you're working on is probably four feet high. So exactly, a lot of tables, uh, yeah. uh, mixers. Yeah, 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 so yeah, you need yeah. a lot of light hitting the ground. Hmm. So we spent a significant amount of I money can imagine. on lighting. So replacing all that with LEDs mm -hmm. was pretty significant. Um, on the slide, we also looked at a few other options as well. well we um, need to take a break and then we can really get into the meat and potatoes here. Sure. So Howard Wig, Think Tech Hawaii, back in a minute with Trung Lam, CFO, Latour Bakehouse. <laughs> Hello, 
My name is Stephanie Mock, and I'm one of three hosts of Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. Our other hosts are Matt Johnson and Pamai Weigert, and we talk to those who are in the fields and behind the scenes of our local food system. We talk to farmers, chefs, restaurateurs, and more to learn more about what goes into sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. We are on at Thursdays at 4 p.m., and we hope we'll see you next time. Hello, and welcome to Out of the Comfort Zone. I am your villainous host, R.B. Kelly. Today we are playing two truths and a lie, and I will tell you two truths, and you will tell me which one is the lie. Truth number one, this is a real mustache. Truth number two, I want you to watch my show on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. So tune in and let me know which is the truth and which is the lie. I'm R.B. Kelly with Out of the Comfort Zone, and show up next Tuesday to see my mustache live. Good afternoon again, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii, Chung Lam, CFO of La Tour Bakehouse, and we're just getting in to the, to mix metaphors, meat and potatoes of the energy saving measures that you've taken. If we could bring that slide back up, quite thoroughly fascinating. So LED, probably the old lamps were uh, 12 watt uh, fluorescent tubes. Yeah, we had a lot yeah. of fluorescent lights, so we looked mm -hmm. at replacing them with LEDs, mm -hmm. uh, putting motion sensors on a lot of them, so if someone, you know, people weren't in the room, the lights would turn themselves off. Mm -hmm. And also de-lamping, which is like looking at with these LEDs, which are brighter yeah. and using less energy, yeah. do we need as many lamps, mm -hmm. right? So uh, they were also looking at window film, and the, the, the list is on there, and the reason why those mm -hmm. are the things we were looking at is there were actually incentives from Hawaii Energy Absolutely. To, to implement yeah, And you, you were very, very wise to hook up with Hawaii Energy. The right. State Energy Office works really, really closely with yeah, them. Yeah, we have a yeah. wonderful relationship with them. We love, mm -hmm. we love working mm -hmm. with them. And you know, as much as we love saving energy for the environment, there, there has to be, a, it has to make sense for them. Absolutely, well. yeah. So uh, on, on the screen, you can see the different incentives we received mm -hmm. from using different technologies, lighting, uh, and cool roof were the two biggest ones, and that was around the same time we did the uh, PV system. Uh, the other three, mm -hmm. the HVAC, the window film, and the EC motors were done a little bit later uh, mm -hmm. over the years. Um, and, and what you'll see on the next side is the PV system was the, significant, the most significant uh, source of energy savings, mm -hmm. and we saw some savings with these, uh, but not as much. So, um, you know, total cost was 48,000, small rebate, and then with the annual savings, there was a really quick payback on a lot of That uh, is. <laughs> this is specifically for the EC motors, uh, right? uh, which uh, is uh, uh. the motors you use in your walk-in refrigerators, Ooh. Uh, which Ooh. are constantly running because with people coming in and out, we're, we're storing yeah, things. Yeah, you, because, things. yeah, you're constantly opening that door. Yeah, and that's a big cost doors. for a lot of businesses here in Hawaii that mm -hmm. do food manufacturing or mm -hmm. food distribution because we bring in a lot of frozen or refrigerated ingredients. Oh, you have, have to, to store keep it somewhere. frozen. Certain so, items, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that, that's really an energy consumer, yeah. yeah. Hmm. So that instance was just the, the EC uh, motor? That was just an example of one of the projects that we did mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. with the, and the payback period. And, and that's then what we're the, for. you have window film there, that's where you have, it's probably an older building, didn't you say? It yeah. is an older building. When we moved uh -huh. in, we did replace all the external windows with, with new ones. Mm -hmm. um, but putting window film helped with the, the the heat coming in as well. Yeah, yeah, because with a normal window, when the sun is directly striking it, 87% of the heat that's striking the exterior is getting into the interior. You put on a good film and that 87% goes down to 25%. Great, yeah. yeah. Our windows are dual pane, mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. we thought we'd put the film on just to, just oh, to help yeah, even that much more. super, super, super efficient, yeah. yeah. Trying to be. Yeah, oh, that's great, yeah. and. So, yeah, you ha so you're down to total consumption, if I remember, electrical of about 28,000 a month? That, that was when we, we started, mm -hmm. and um, we were growing. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to see how, how low we can get that. And on the next slide, it actually shows our energy usage. Mm -hmm. uh, and from when that little house is actually when we put the PV on. So from 2011 to 2012, we saw a significant drop uh, continuing to 2013, and the, between 2013 and 2014 is when we did the, the AC motors and then the uh, LED light 
upgrades. But what's really funny, if you look at our, our, our energy usage, it went up. Mm -hmm. And you would think, why would it go up if you're adding more things to reduce yeah. energies? Yeah. And, and the next slide will show you, explain why. Uh, the little snow symbols are actually when we had to install more air conditioning mm -hmm. because we were growing as a business. Mm -hmm. and between moving to this new facility in 2010 till now, we've actually doubled in revenue, um, which is we went from about 10 million to about 20 million revenue over that period of time. So we saw significant electrical mm -hmm. usage grow just because mm -hmm. business was growing. And as business was growing, there was more mm -hmm. bodies. We, we have about 150 employees now. And, we have to keep all those spaces nice and cool, so we had to install more air conditioning, which drove mm. usage up. Which is great, because if we didn't have the PV system, our utility bills would be through the roof. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And the PV system has helped quite a bit. Wow. And how many KW is the PV system? Uh, yeah, it's 300, split 300, into two yeah. systems. The feed-in tariff system mm -hmm. was limited to about 200, uh, the size, mm -hmm. kilowatts. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we had to have a secondary NEM system, about 100 kilowatt system. Mm -hmm. Could we go back to that uh, last slide there? So the, so what is the line there? So on the left, it's 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 uh, two y axes. On the left is actually mm -hmm. the usage. Oh, okay, in okay, hours, percentage of revenue. Right, which is the um, yeah, and on the right is the percentage of revenue. Mm -hmm. So we use more electricity but percentage of revenue was kept low because we were growing at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like this: you want to save energy, because it's good for the environment, but mm -hmm. it has to make financial sense. Absolutely, absolutely, so, yeah. As long as your business is growing, it makes sense to invest in these technologies, mm -hmm. because as a percentage of revenue, which is how most businesses look at their utility costs, mm -hmm. if you can keep that down, of course you can. You should invest in, in technologies to help your business yeah. run more yeah. efficiently. And I might point out that all of the technologies that you've installed have, a, in my opinion, a minimum life of uh, 15 years. Maybe those motors will have a slightly lower yeah. life, but right. once they're in, LEDs last virtually forever. I love LEDs. Yes. Yeah, they have um, about 60,000, easily 60,000 hours on them. Which is good, because we run 24-7, uh, 365. Oh, we never shut down, so the lights are used quite a bit. <laughs> so you have three shifts of people coming Three shifts, in. yeah. It's actually more like two and a half. There's like a short shift where there's like a skeleton crew. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we, we, we don't shut down because our customers don't. Hmm. Impressive. Thank you. Wow. Are there, did we go through the last slide there? I think there's a one or two more. Oh, yeah. Okay. So okay, good, this good. is just yeah. a simple pros and cons list of mm -hmm. what we learned doing these different projects. Uh, pros, the smaller energy, the smaller energy efficiency projects, they have a lower upfront cost, which is great. But because they're kind of smaller, it's hard to quantify how much you're saving as your yeah. business is growing because your usage fluctuates yeah, and so drastically. You're, you're a moving target, but on the other hand, you know that you're saving something because you're putting in more efficient equipment and you're assuming that it's doing what it's supposed to do. Right. And, and a lot of these you, you can yeah. test. Mm -hmm. You can test uh, using equipment to see how much yeah, you Yeah, you, you can submeter. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially in a growing business where you have a lot of cash flow coming in and you'd rather save on some taxes, mm -hmm. uh, spending it on capital expenditures to, in the long run, help your business There's really helps a lot. There's another benefit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So CapEx is, is uh, what? Capital expenditure, equipment, uh -huh, machinery, uh -huh. big big expenses that usually you mm -hmm. don't expense, but you amortize over a period of time, like yeah. five years. Yeah. Um, you know, there's also other benefits in addition to have good return on investment. It makes you feel good knowing you're saving energy. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. It gets you on ThinkTech, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, sharing your story, and, and it helps with the employees. Employees, of course, love to save energy. They like to help the environment as well. And when mm -hmm. they see the company focusing on that, it makes them feel good about you know where they work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and because say just in the instance of uh, lighting, that's new lighting, good lighting. Oh yeah, it's and nice and bright. I love it. Yeah, they're with the fluorescent. Some people get uh, headaches under fluorescent because there's, there's many, many, many little uh, fluctuations in mm -hmm. the light. But LEDs, that, that's absolutely not the case. And in, ter in terms of uh, maintenance, again, the LEDs, 60,000 hours. You can, uh, even at 24 hours, that's easily uh, six years. Eight. And they don't put out a lot of heat. Yeah. A little bit yeah. of heat, but not, not no, compared very, to traditional Very, 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 very little. Therefore, your AC load goes down. 
even with all those warm buddies uh, all over the place. And ovens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's incredible. Do we have one last slide, I believe? Oh, just a thank you slide. Yeah, okay. I think that was it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're looking okay. forward to new ways on, on saving energy. Right now we mm -hmm. are trying to review uh, battery storage units, mm -hmm. especially with you know, the hurricanes that came through. Yes. Um, yes. you know, most businesses use diesel generators or gas, propane gas generators, but for mm -hmm. our size, mm -hmm. we would need a, a sizable generator to cover mm -hmm. what we need. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people probably have been to our, our building. There's not a lot of parking outside, mm -hmm. so we don't want to like lose any of that for a large generator. So yeah. battery yeah. is yeah. much more compact. We can store it, uh, you know, above ground. Mm -hmm. We don't have to exhaust the fumes mm -hmm. the way we would if we use a regular generator. So we're exploring the feasibility. You, you, you don't that. need a fuel tank. That too, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hmm. Well, let me just give you some good news and the audience some good news. Just at the last Hawaii Building Code Council meeting mm -hmm. a month ago, we adopted the NEC, National Electrical Code, 2017 version. And that has a, lo a long section on batter storage batteries. And it lists all the safety procedures that you need to go through. And so you comply with that, and you've probably realized that sometimes getting building permits for things takes right. just a, a while. Yes. As long as the engineer who signs off on that project says, I am in, these, this design is in compliance. The 2017 National Electrical Code, the Plan checkers will give it just a very cursory review. Yep, 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 yep. And boom, you, you've got it. Excellent. Yeah. And you know that your design is really, really safe because people are still kind of scared of storage batteries because uh, Kahuku had old lead acid batteries and there was a fire there. And bad news lasts a long time. So now you've got a safe, efficient uh, system. And uh, Hawaii Energy, no, I don't think they can give a, a rebate on that because it doesn't save energy, it just shifts the load. Yeah, yeah. cross your fingers that the, uh, the state mm -hmm. creates some incentive for businesses yeah. to adopt that technology yeah, yeah, in the yeah, future. Yeah, that, that's our future. Well, on that cheery note, we do need to close for the day. Thank you so much, Trung Lam. This has been an inspirational uh, story. If every business in the state did this, Boom, we would realize our energy goals very, very, very quickly. Thank you, Howard. It's a lot of fun. So that does it for us. Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. See you next time.